Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover oscillatory motion in electro-pneumatic circuits. The first question, what is an oscillatory motion, specifically in electro-pneumatic systems? So when we are dealing with a single acting cylinder or a double acting cylinder, and we are looking for an actuation which can basically oscillate between advancing and retraction non-stop, we basically have an oscillatory motion. So this oscillatory motion can be stopped with the use of a brake switch or an emergency stop depending on the application. So how the circuit of these types of oscillatory motions can be designed? We are going to focus basically on the design of oscillatory motion. So in the next slide, I'll show you the circuit with a direct form of control. So what we have in here is basically automatic actuation with direct control for a system with oscillatory motion. As you can see in this side, we have the air supply, air service unit, the directional control valve with five ports and two positions, and the sort of actuation is basically electrical actuation, right? And also we have manual override as we can see. And then we are basically connected to a double acting cylinder and you see we have two labels which are called S1 and S2 and these two labels are basically connected to two make switches that we have in electric circuit in here, right? So if we provide the power for the electric circuit and if we provide the air supply for the pneumatic side of the circuit, we won't have any stop in the mo motion of the system and we expect to have oscillatory motion non-stop. And if I turn on this brake switch 1S1, basically that oscillatory motion is going to be a stop. So let's look how this system works. We have S1, right? And this one is basically linked to the switch, which means whenever the system is in fully retracted position, this is closed and the current can pass through this line. And we have the brake switch 1S1, which means we are still in a closed condition, therefore current can pass to one by one, which is a solenoid, and that solenoid is going to electrically actuate this directional control valve, right? And then it starts advancing until it reaches to the fully advanced position. We consider S2 as the fully advanced position, which means the piston is in the maximum possible stroke that it can have. So now we are in S2 and S2 is basically linked to this make switch that we have over there, right? So this is going to be closed. Current can pass to this solenoid one by two. And from there, we have this one energized and basically the retraction process is going to start because when one by two is energized, this is going to be shifted to initial position. Air will be exhausted basically from this side and the system is going to operate and it starts retraction reaching to S1. And now we are in S1. Again, we have this one closed, current will pass and we will have that motion non-stop, right? Oscillating between S1 and S2. So now in the next part of this video, I'm going to focus on designing the circuit, see how we can basically cover oscillatory motion. Okay, we saw the circuit of an oscillatory motion related to electro-pneumatic systems. In this part, I'm going to design that a specific circuit. What we need is basically, for the pneumatic side, we need an actuator. And as you might remember, it was a double acting cylinder. And for that double acting cylinder, we had uh, basically a directional control valve connected with five ports and two positions, as you can see here. And then the other thing that we had was this air service unit, right? So air service unit is located in a uh, supply element here and one compressed air supply. And both of them are going to be connected here. And then this is going to be connected as well. These two are going to be basically the exhaust for us. First one, and this is going to be the second one. 
and we go to the configure valve right and as you might remember it was piloted and then manual override electrical actuation so manual override electrical actuation piloted the same thing this side manual override electrical actuation and pilot head okay right and then here as you might remember we have two labels the first one was s1 and the second one was s2 the first one was representing the position of fully retracted and the second one was representing the fully advanced position so we we go to the actuating labels before that we can see the maximum stroke is 100 millimeters so we go there labels s1 and we put zero here so it is showing the initial state which is fully retracted position and then we put s2 and this is going to be 100 millimeters which is the fully at mass position and then head okay so the next step after here putting labels i'm calling this one 1a and this one is going to be called 1v1 and for this uh basically air service unit i'm going to put zero z head okay now we have pneumatic side ready the next step is designing the electric side right the electric circuit so what we need is basically bringing the power supply 24 and 0 extending this line the line of power that we have right so now the the electric circuit is the the power supply for the electric circuit is ready the next step is bringing the switches as you might remember we had two make switches right so we go to this general the first make switch and then the second one and the first one is going to be connected to a brake switch and brake switch is coming from here so that is going to be the brake switch that we have just putting it here and then after that we have uh, basically the solenoid which is located inside relays so the first one and that is the second right so that is going to be connected to upside this is going to be connected downside So here we would have now basically we need to do that those connections right we have the make switches but those make switches should fill the position in order to operate accordingly right so that is going to be connected to s1 so calling this one s1 looks at the state of s1 when that state is met basically that is going to be closed and we have the same thing here but this one is going to look at the state of S2, which means when the piston is in the fully advanced position, it looks at that specific position. And from there, we will have the retraction process start. So S2, head OK, right? So this is the, these two switches, right? So uh, the next one is going to be here, calling this one 1S1, one head OK. And here, the only remaining part is labeling uh, the solenoid, right? This is going to be called one by one. Head OK. And this one is going to be called one by two. Head OK. And now we have one by one and one by two ready. But we have two circuits. One is pneumatic side, the other side is electric circuit, right? But they are not connected. They are not communicating with each other. Therefore, in order to do that, we just need to double click this side. Consider this one Y1, link it to 1Y1, and link this side to the 1Y2. Hit OK. So if I start this simulation, what I expect is starting the operation and having the automatic actuation and oscillatory motion, right? So let's start the simulation. So you see we have the oscillatory motion, non-stop, because at the beginning, this is feeling that position. This is sensing that position already linked to 
the fully retracted position, right? The current will pass, this is energized, and that is going to be a non-stop motion until I push this break switch. Right? The system is going to stop from the operation. And if it is a detent switch, it can maintain its position, right? But because it's a push button tie, I need to keep it and whenever I release it, the system is start operation again. Okay, so that is how we have oscillatory motion and that is how we can design oscillatory motion in electromagnetic circuits. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, please subscribe our channel.